Folks, we are going to continue our teaching on the dunamis power of God. How does the dunamis power of God operate and why is it so important? But today, just before I go any further into it, I need to just, as we go, we need to just correct some of the thinking that we have and some of the ideas that we have been taught. All right, because it's important, because as we go further into this, um, I'm not going to always come back and remind us of the basic principles. But one of the things that I want you to, to look at, and that is this, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, and I want you to know that today I want to deal with that God's word is the highest authority. We cannot um, dismiss or even challenge God's word, okay? If God's word um, is issued, then I'm telling you right now, we are very, very excited um, about the word of God being made manifest. In other words, seeing the word in operation, seeing things happen. And so that is what we are busy with. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 4 verse 20, it says this, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What does that mean? It means it's not good enough for you just to say, listen, I am born again. I am a Christian. You need to demonstrate that with some sort of power in your life. There needs to be a demonstration of the dunamis power operating out of every single believer. If we say that we're part of the kingdom of God. Now, how do I become the part of the kingdom of God? Very simple. I've accepted Jesus Christ. Okay, if I've accepted Jesus Christ, um, then, I have, then I'm part of the kingdom. And so I'm asking you right now, take note of the scripture. If you are part of the kingdom, it has to be demonstrated uh, as part of your Christian walk that there is power operating out of your life. And so that is something that we need to take note of. If I'm born again, I'm expected to have power operating. Now, in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, and I want to just deal with this because it's important. Because um, we've got a lot of questions. A lot of questions have been raised already across uh, the nation. I've got a lot of WhatsApps around this. So let's deal with this this morning. It says in Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2, Then he called his twelve disciples together, and he gave them power. He gave them dunamis. Okay? He gave them dunamis and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now remember, we're still busy with the issue of dunamis power and healing the sick. So I want, to take, I want you to take note of something here. Firstly, these disciples weren't even saved yet. I know this is going to shock you, but I want you to take note of this. They couldn't be saved because they could only get saved after Jesus had raised from the dead. But Jesus Christ gave them specific, limited authority. Okay, he said to them that they could go and cast out devils and they can go heal the sick. That was the, the authority sphere that they were given um, even before they were, they were born again. And so when they went out, they went out with the dunamis power of God. And they went to go pray for sick and they were seeing results. Now, I want to raise something with us. And let's, let's use my own life because I'm sure everybody's got a story. I'm sure that every single person here can tell us a story where you prayed for somebody and they didn't get healed. In fact, some of them even died. There have been many cases where I've prayed for people and they've actually passed away. All right. I've had two occasions so far where I've actually prayed for people who are dead to pray and, and, and raise them back from, uh, from the dead into life. And it hasn't worked on either case. But let me make something very clear. We cannot dismiss God's word just because we never saw a result. We cannot sit down and say, okay, well, God, I don't like this scripture and tear it out of the Bible. You see, we need to understand that as we start pushing in, we are going to start seeing more and more of these things happen. Here comes the question. Why did it not happen? I want to tell you and I want to make a general statement. I think it's because we are not pushing in as believers enough into this field into this area and what happens is we start praying out of a desperation okay and so we need to understand that we are we are coming to a place and suddenly we're trying to build our faith 
and we're trying to sit down and say, God, now we just pray and we just keep praying and we're getting out of it, coming with desperation rather than coming with real faith. And so if we are going to see a shift and a change that every single Christian is operating with power, we need to start focusing on that power. We need to start focusing and saying, God, I'm going to trust you for supernatural healings and miracles every time I pray for somebody. You see, the question that I have is, how many people are you actually praying for? You know, when I go to meetings like, um, like Rainer Bonker or some of these evangelists, these healing evangelists, you go there and you'll see that they literally pray for the sick every single day. They are trusting God. They are believing God. Now, we can't say that God's word is not true because I've already had so many testimonies of people being healed just by taking communion. People sitting there, the one lady said that she had a back ailment from the age of 16 and she's 85 and she got healed. Instantly, God healed her. All the pain is gone. She said the first time since she was 16 years old that she sits without pain. Now, we can't deny that God is going to do that. But the issue is this, is are we at the level where we are practicing that as a level of power in our lives? Answer is no. And just because we prayed for somebody and they didn't get healed doesn't mean that God doesn't heal. And this is a statement that I want to make very clearly. This is very important what I'm about to say. If you pray for somebody and they don't get healed, you can't make an excuse and say, well, God chose not to heal that person. If we, if we go down to that excuse, we are actually saying, okay, Jesus, your, your death on the cross your price was paid only for some people and not for others. That's not true. Now, I think that the problem lies with us as the general Christian population. We are not pushing in for this thing. We are not expecting God, okay, to really um, bring us to the place where we're operating in this power. So today, I want to just give you the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 4, 20 that I read today. And Luke chapter 9, verse 1 and 2. And so today I want to encourage us. Let's start focusing on the power of God. Now from tomorrow again, I will start teaching you elements as to how the power operates and what we need to start expecting God for. But I want to start with this healing. I think that we as the church of Jesus Christ are moving more and more away from the principle of healing. And one of the two things, element of Jesus' body being broken for us is for our healing. And so we need to understand it's a critical part of our Christian walk. Then I want to go further and say, listen, that healing is not just for Christians. That healing is for any person who is sick. When they sent out the disciples, they weren't praying for Christians. Nobody was saved on the planet. They were praying for unbelievers. When they lined the streets for Peter's shadow to, to rest on them, that is for unbelievers. You know, we've had the opportunity a few times where, and it's not a good thing to say this, but, you know, if there's an accident or something that you come by, you know, that you're able to sit down and pray and minister and release the power of God. And so it's important that whether the person saved or unsaved doesn't make a difference. You can pray and that person can be supernaturally healed, I'm telling you what, that is going to bring them closer to God. But it starts by this. The kingdom of God is not in word only. It's by the demonstration of God's power. And I think that that is where we are lacking in the body of Christ as the church of Jesus Christ. We are lacking in allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us. And the Bible is full of it. Okay? The Bible is, is full of God's power and the Holy Spirit working through us. And so right now, as we take the elements, I want us to sit down and say, from today, Lord, your word is the highest authority. Even if I don't match up to it, even if I'm not seeing it right now, it doesn't change the fact that your word is the highest authority. If your word says that I can be healed in Jesus' name, it is the highest authority. If your word says that demons have to flee and come out in Jesus' name, your word is the highest authority. And so we are going to teach you how to use the dunamis power. 
and we're going to teach you how to use the power to cast out devils and set people free. We're going to go through all of those things. But let's start by us recognizing that we've got a way to go. Let us recognize that we are not where we should be and we are not exactly lining up to what the Bible says a Christian should be operating in. And today, we are going to start pursuing that, going after that, hungering for that, and say, God, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is so real to me that when we pray, power is released in Jesus' name. Remember that it's the dunamis power that does everything on this planet, everything. And we're going to show you how that, that dunamis power even impacts your income. I'm going to show you exactly, publicly, because we need to have the dunamis power of God influencing our entire life. So I would like you please just to get the elements as we share today. Lord, we just thank you that Jesus, at the night that, that you were betrayed, you took bread and broke it and said that this is my body. Eat and do it in remembrance of me. And that you took your blood, uh, the cup and you said, this is my blood. Drink, do it in the remembrance of me. Lord, I thank you today, Lord, that we can ask you to forgive us of anything that is wrong in our lives. And Lord, today we thank you for every sin, everything that we've done wrong. We ask you right now just to cleanse us in Jesus' name. But Father, I pray right now that you'll forgive us. Jesus, that you would forgive us. Where we have minimized your word. Lord, where we have made excuses. And Lord, where we've tried to justify while we're not seeing the results. But Lord, I pray right now that as we take communion today, that we will have a revelation and an understanding that you want us physically healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that your body was broken for us and that the stripes of Jesus was for our healing. And Lord, as we take communion today, I thank you that as we take of the bread, Lord, that we will release the dunamis power of God into our physical bodies and anything that is wrong come in line right now in Jesus' name. We thank you for your blood that was shed for our salvation, for our protection, and for our provision. But Lord, right now, I thank you that we are going to seek the power of your Holy Spirit to operate in our lives like never before. Lord, that we will not be Christians with just words, but we will be Christians with a demonstration of God's power in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let's partake together. I want you, as you sit right now, just to lay your hands on your stomach and just pray this with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I release the dunamis power of God that is within me to flow through my mortal body. I thank you that I am healed in Jesus' name. I command every symptom to go. And I thank you, Lord, for a supernatural intervention of your Holy Spirit right now. I thank you, Lord, that I'm healed by the power of God in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to just make a statement. I'm so excited about the testimonies of people that, are, that have been coming in, of people that are being born again. People who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into their life. People that have said, listen, we're going to make Jesus Christ king of our life. If you have anybody who, who would like to uh, make that commitment, you're welcome to go to Dr. Arthur Frost's Facebook page. I've got a video there for the salvation so that they can just watch it, pray with it, and then they can make a comment or send us a WhatsApp to say, listen, I've made that decision in Jesus' name. But folks, right now we are going to pray over our nation. One of the areas that I've been highlighted to pray over is our police and, and army.
because they are working exceptionally hard and very long hours right now. And the reason for that is, is because there's a substantial amount of people who are actually going hungry. All right, um, we are seeing it all over. Anybody who we are connected to with the feeding schemes and whatever, they are all saying the demand's getting quite high. Um, a lot of us are trying to see what we can do and connect people and try and get finances, go buy food and whatever to go and help. But this is the issue. The people that are trying to help and protect and just uh, guard are getting tired. They're working very long hours and we don't want their immune systems to go down because that give, puts them at a risk to pick up this virus. So right now we are going to pray together and we're going to pray for our essential services. And we are going to really stand in agreement for our essential services because it's important that we keep a covering for those who are on the front line in Jesus' name. Even those working in the medical field, you know, they're working long hours in the pharmacies, in the, in the doctor's rooms. You know, it's not always just the doctor, it's the staff that are helping. And so we need to pray right now in Jesus' name and stand together. And we're going to create a covering for everybody who is at risk. Lord, we come before you right now. We pray over our nation. Lord, we thank you for what you've already done. But in Jesus' name, we pray over every essential service person who is at risk right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we highlight those that are working exceptionally long hours on the medical, on the police, the army. Lord, I thank you right now. Whoever's working very long hours, you see me, we pray particularly for the immune system in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you right now that you will strengthen them and supernaturally carry them in this time. And Lord, I thank you right now for a supernatural covering and protection over every single person who is, who is uh, in a place right now of vulnerability. Father, we pray for a supernatural protection. We release your word. We thank you, Lord, that as we have released the word over this nation every single day, we thank you that angels are going out to perform and work and minister on our behalf. Lord, we thank you right now that we can pray for a protection over this nation like never before. We thank you, Lord, for creative ideas for the business people sitting at home so that when they go, that there will be a supernatural, a supernatural, Lord, flow in the business sectors. Lord, I thank you right now that our economy will prosper in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the blessing of the Lord. And I thank you, Lord, that you are raising up men and women who are going to have their faith ready to be able to turn whatever comes in the natural. Lord, we are going to turn it in the spirit and we're going to release the blessing of God over our nation in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you right now that as we stand in agreement, Lord, that not only is there protection over everybody, but God, we pray for our president. We pray for strength. Lord, we pray for wisdom. And we pray, Lord, for a supernatural leading of your spirit in his life. And Lord, I pray right now, that you're going to give him the wisdom that he needs for our nation, that every decision will be a God-given one. And Father, I pray right now for every single person who doesn't have food, households. Lord, I pray for a supernatural intervention that people will get the unction to go there. Lord, to start giving the food. Father, we thank you for those that are trying. Lord, we pray right now that we will be able to assist and help those wherever we can. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you will just help the church to be the example right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you are going to take care of our nation and people are not going to die because of hunger. In Jesus' name, we come against that. But Lord, I pray right now that you're going to give us the creative ideas and the means to go and help those who need. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Amen. Amen.